The song Away by Sokin in the game Final Fantasy XVI begins with an ode to Prometheus, who stole the fire of Zeus and gave it to mankind. Prometheus has long since been associated with the Gnostic rebel. As thinkers like Jakob Tabez noted, Gnosticism and thus rebellion is how man courses along his path to progress in history, evolving himself onward as a species. Much in the same manner, Clive Rossfield is the Promethean man, evolving onward from mere mythos or myth and eventually attaining his own logos or language, allowing him to write his own story or history. In fact, in the game end credits, it is suggested he wrote the book Final Fantasy under his brother's, Joshua's, name. Logos or language is what separates man from the instinctual animal, tied of course to Christ as well as the Gnostic and Neoplatonic forms of thought. Thus too, with free will, does man liberate himself in the Gnostic light. The light, of course, being what was brought on by either Lucifer, the light bringer, or the flames of Prometheus himself. Either way, as Sokin's lyrics point out, faith is disbanded in such a system, since man seeks to liberate himself from the Gnostic demiurge or the deceiving god, becoming a god unto himself. Much like the phoenix, man is reborn from out the flames, risen as an entirely new entity. Clive's brother Joshua is in fact the phoenix in the game. In this sense, man has become akin to Christ. He has become the philosopher's stone, the grand panacea, the perfect substance, i.e. a god unto himself. And thus the need to kill God in the game so as to be allowed to become one ourselves, escaping out from servitude and oppression as a people. Killing God, of course, is not uncommon in Final Fantasy stories, after all, and has pretty much been a staple in the series. One of the best characters in the game who represents the will of God other than Ultima himself is Barnabas or Odin. Barnabas notes man's link to the Gnostic or Promethean tale of man acquiring a sense of consciousness. Again, man attains consciousness in the Garden of Eden in Gnosticism by eating the fruit of knowledge, which the Demiurge told us not to do. In the Gnostic interpretation, Christ is in fact the serpent that tells Adam and Eve to eat the fruit, imparting knowledge or gnosis onto them so as to be liberated from the false Demiurge Yahweh. Similarly, the fire of Prometheus acts as a form of techne, imparting unto man technological tools that could aid in his advancement. This comes, of course, in the form of technical magic, as J.R.R. Tolkien might say. The primary theme of Gnosticism and Prometheism is for man to liberate himself from a sense of unjust fate. The Persona series is heavily influenced by Gnostic thought, based on the works of Carl Jung, who was a well-known Gnostic and even owned the first codex of the Nag Hammadi himself. Thus, from the Gnostic or Promethean perspective, man is a prisoner, attempting to free himself from the shackles of fate, which is of course written amongst the stars, tied to the Greco-Roman notion of the cosmos, which is linked to the polis. This led to the development of the Stoic disposition, where man was to adhere to the fate given to him in the cosmic heavens and follow it out in the city-state itself, thus linking the cosmos and the polis into the cosmopolitan lifestyle. Barnabas, who is most likely named after St. Barnabas, who was both a follower of Christ and who essentially helped establish the church, defends Ultima, who comes across as the demiurgic god in the game. Barnabas notes the problem with man's sense of free will in the Gnostic or Promethean manner, noting on how it has basically divorced men from God. What's interesting is Barnabas takes the traditional or orthodox Christian perspective, which is an antithesis to the Gnostics. The fall of man in the Gnostic tradition is linked to being deceived by a demiurgic entity, Whereas in orthodoxy, man falls due to temptation, leading to the concept of original sin, as well as Adam and Eve's ex uh, expulsion from the Garden of Eden itself. In the Gnostic system, blame is to be put on the deceitful demiurge, whereas in orthodoxy, man has no one to blame but himself and his own inherently flawed failings. Barnabas also makes mention to man uh, being akin to sheep, which is a common symbol in Christianity since Christ is, of course, the shepherd.
Barnabas, in taking the traditional perspective, sees man's flaws as a species, given over to greed and avarice. The fleece of gold he mentions is in reference to Chrysomalos and the story of the golden fleece. Chrysomalos uh, itself is actually included in the game Final Fantasy uh, XIV. I believe it just came out in uh, the most recent expansion, if I'm not mistaken. Now, the fleece can also, of course, be linked to Gideon from the Bible's uh, Book of Judges, who uses the gold uh, of the Midianites to make an ephod, or apron, uh, which was traditionally worn by high priests and which contained uh, kind of within them these oracular forms of insight. The question then becomes which is right, the Gnostic lens or the Orthodox one? Was it original sin or a deceptive demiurge that shackled man to his servitude? Barnabas, in orthodox fashion, notes mankind's betrayal towards God, tempted by Eden's fruit. In the Promethean manner, man was tempted by the techne of fire, or the light of Luciferian illumination, the gnosis, or knowledge gained from Gnostic insight. Barnabas preaches repentance, and that only by being devout followers of God can man claim his place back in heaven, finding salvation in his own eschatological end. Man's free will to Barnabas thus only ends in folly due to mankind's own flaws and fallibility as a being, originating back to the fall of man and the invention of the notion of original sin linked to Adam and Eve's own temptations. Ultima himself is conveyed in the game during Clive and Barnabas's fight as a statue which resembles either the Vitruvian man or Christ on the cross. In the end, Clive revolts against Barnabas as well as Ultima, claiming his own free will in the Gnostic manner, becoming a god unto himself and fighting for the oppressed people that have been held down by this demiurgic deity. It should be noted that the name Ultima means last or final, whereas Mythos, which is the name given to Clive by Ultima, means mythology or fantasy. Clive was meant to be Ultima's vessel in the game, merged together in an alchemic manner. Thus, Mythos and Ultima combined give us Final Fantasy, which is the title of the game series itself. In the end, Ultima is conveyed as the obvious bad guy along with Barnabas. Again, it is a common theme in Final Fantasy games to kill God through the power of friendship uh, and fighting for freedom. But perhaps Barnabas uh, was right in the end. Gnostic man must repent in reality, for it is he who is truly flawed. And it is he who merely uses the idea of a deceptive deity, a Gnostic demiurge, as an excuse to spare himself of his own flaws and personal forms of imperfection, leading ultimately to his own failure. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry it's been so long. Uh, I had some things going on uh, in my life. I'm going to be moving soon, stuff like that. And I've been working on a new book, uh, which is turning out to be a composite of aphorisms uh, so far, interestingly enough. So it's still far away, uh, far away from done. It's only about 70 pages or so right now, but I do plan on it being at least 120 or so. So, you know, it's not kind of a proper length uh, text. Uh, once I complete that, I'll post a video for you with the link in the description if you want to read it uh, as usual. So until then, thanks again for watching and uh, toast to you. So cheers. Uh, I figured Arrogant Bastard Ale would be a good beer to drink uh, when describing us uh, arrogant uh, humans, the arrogant hubris of humanity. So I guess we'll, we'll toast to that, to the arrogant hubris of humanity. So toast to you tonight and uh, hopefully see you soon. Take care.